So what we was basically going to cover was we was going to do um, that class again today. And um, cause a lot of people missed out. So we're going to basically do that class again today. And um, now we're going to have to do it like a panel, give you the information, spark some questions, and kind of take it from there. So you guys are going to be a lot more involved this one, in this time around. As before, you maybe could sit back and just watch the slides come up and then take mental notes or physical notes. Now you kind of got to be more involved because we don't have that. So we got to communicate. And that was the AMA part. Then the Chef Aki, the sister here to my left, um, she was going to come in with the nutrition. Because if a sister or a woman is fighting something like cis, fibroids, she has to know now what not to eat and what she should start eating. Okay? Don't like using the word changing a diet. It's changing a lifestyle. That has to change. And when you tell individuals you can't eat this anymore, you need to drop that, especially black people, chicken, it's like, yo, <laughs> you've just, you just destroyed my world. But the sister here has some excellent recipes that can compensate that with the right nutrients, the right um, nourishment for what your body needs to help get rid of those unpleasant cysts, fibroids, etc. So this is what we're going to be basically tackling today and giving you those, that information. So again, it's not gone the way as planned, but due to difficulties out of our control, we got to adapt. So feel free at any point to like ask a question or something needs to be repeated again. And um, how much space we got to write? <laughs> For a world of space. So sit back, enjoy. And like I said, don't be scared to ask any questions. All right? Especially you, Chris. All right, you from who? You from up top, so do your up top thing. All right, and brothers, um, Seti, you know what you're working with, so just no I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, um, as as even on the even on the male side, it's 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 very enlightening for us to understand what's going on with these sisters. All right, so cameraman. Want me ready? No. I told him not to even waste his arm. So, oh. so I would like it, and so I know. You, would... you, not, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't got no film, but you're going to have to turn that when I take it to the board. So is there any questions that anybody has? On I, I wanted to jump to... on what Benjamin was okay. saying, just to kind of give a, you know, preface everything real quick. Um, um, I think... Uh, the state of black health, we all kind of understand, is you know we're we're under attack. You know, female women is under attack. Black women lead the world in hysterectomies, fibroids, cysts. I've experienced it, not myself personally, but my my sister completely. Um, you know, has, her psychological effects of having a full hysterectomy has been tremendous, and it's horrible. She's not the same person. She lost her womb at the age of 24. So this is something that's happening so frequently, and black women don't feel that they have an option. They're being told that you know either you're going to maybe give birth and maybe you can lose your child or maybe you can lose your life um, if you don't have this type of operation. Um, and if you know, along with the operations, they're given medications for the rest of their lives. So um, the the hormonal effects, the psychological effects, the effects on the whole community is is a major issue. Um, and I just kind of wanted to just kind of preface it with, um, you know, a lot of these things that we face, whether it's reproductive health, um, diabetes, cancer, all these things, we found that, you know, it can be cured through lifestyle, can be cured through um, some simple changes in just diet um, and just just lifestyle, you know, habits. So um, I also um, we... The Aboriginal Medical Association, I think, is doing a wonderful job of letting people know that our body chemistry, our physiology, anatomy is very different from uh, the people who are giving us this um, information, modern day information on how to be healthy. 
and it's uh, it's very similar to, for example, when it comes to um, black hair care. I mean, whether you're black, whether you're Hispanic, whatever you are, you're, you're not going to go to supercuts to get your edge up or get your fade. You know, sisters are not going to use, uh, you know, the pro suave or the products that, you know, Caucasian women use for their hair products. They're not going to go get their hair done <clears throat> or twisted or coiled or rolled up by Caucasians. But when it comes to our health, we believe that for some reason that we can go to Caucasians, we can go to any other institute other than our own to find out what we need for our own health and well-being, which is ridiculous because they are funded by people who look like them for people to, you know, get healed who look like them. So um, I love um, the approach of the Aboriginal Medical Association. We need, it's high time that we have um, uh, a group of physicians who uh, are studying our very unique genetic makeup and how to begin to address that. And um, those things that make us unique um, are the very things that uh, are hurting us when we are taking on the culture and the diet and the lifestyle that is killing us. So j just to preface it a little bit more in my work as um, nutritional counselor, as a chef, um, vegan vegetarian chef, um, a lot of people assume that they are healthy, they're doing the right thing. They're saying, well, I'm vegetarian, I, I'm just working out, or you know, even some people say, well, I eat fish, I'm working out, you know, I, I may do a little dairy, some soy, and this and that, I eat wheat bread, you know, I'm not doing too much sugar, but you know, this and that, I'm, I'm cutting down on my salt, you know, a lot of things, or drinking water, a lot of these things that we hear that we think is what is actually being healthy, or it's a healthy lifestyle, is actually not, you know, wheat bread is horrible. Um, uh, 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 dairy milk, you know, it's calcium and all this stuff is horrible, cow's milk and so forth. So um, drinking, just drinking water all the time, just drinking water actually is not good for you. Water is dead and you'll learn more about that um, when M2 gives his presentation. So that's another thing that we're addressing um, with this particular presentation is that um, a lot of, a lot of the, the misconceptions that we have about what healthy really means and how to um, uh, how you can use that use that information in your daily life so hopefully um, you guys will have some questions and we'll do our best um, to do this panel style today because any question that you have it'll help us to to be able to just have more content for for the slides and for the presentation. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I was going to, I'm just going to talk like I was, um, this is what I was going to do in the presentation, everybody. <laughs> I was going to go through just this, um, statistics. Uh, um, and this is all commerce. It's all commercial. Everything that's going on with the um, degradation of black health, black people's health, it's all based around commerce. Now, um, we, we want to focus firstly on black women because, um, you know, their wombs are the portals into the, into the world that we all come through. And there's an attack on the womb. Now, what's going on, like um, Chef Aki mentioned earlier, you know, her sister had a, had a hysterectomy. I just found out this week thinking that, you know, my family's special, but, you know, I know my mum had a hysterectomy when I was a lot younger, and I found out this week my two of my sisters have had hysterectomy, and they're basically told, look, you've got fibroids, and this is the best way to deal with fibroids, because you ain't getting any younger, you've had children already, so let's just do a hysterectomy. Now, the... So, so the, were you the last child? Huh? Yes. Oh, I think I think yeah, she was ha I think she was having the hysterectomy when the yes, I was born. Right? <laughs> you know, after me, she was like, "Alright, that's it. I gotta have no more." But um, see, she's filming, and I I don't really want to be even sitting there. I wanna I wanna go to the whiteboard because you know there's numbers involved in this whole game, right? It's a numbers game, and um, what's going on? I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the whiteboard. Okay. You, know, mm -hmm. you, you two pretty people can see me on camera. All right, so, um, oh, there you go. Hey. Oh, that's not a 
cameraman. All right. So the whole phenomenon of five, well, um, the whole phenomenon of fibroids and cysts is basically this is what happens. And I'm not, I'm only going to speak from our black people standpoint. You know, my concern isn't with um, Europeans and Caucasians because we have different anatomies, and I don't really, you know, I study anatomy in general, but in depth I study, you know, black anatomy or, or melanated anatomy. So this is the issue. Here's, a, here's the scenario that usually goes on with black sisters, right? They're having periods. Their periods may be a bit heavy. They may start experiencing cramps and pains and everything. And when the cramps are slight or tolerable, it's told, oh, that's just your cycle. You're, you're getting cramps and everything. What's going on is that there may be cysts or maybe fibroids, right? Now, when they go to see a specialist, a physician or, or um, you know, a uh, uh, practitioner, right? They're being told, okay, we need to regulate your, your cycle, your menses. We need to regulate it, bring it under control. So we've got two sisters in the room right now, right? And have any of you or your family members ever gone to see a doctor about heavy periods or, or anything like that? What were they told to do to regulate their periods? What Keep were they birth control on those. But see, all right. So I, I've never met you before, have I? You know, this is what magicians do. <laughs> never met you before, right? But that's what they do. So somebody, so a female goes into um, has pains or or let's say um, symptoms. They don't know what their symptoms are. They're just in pain, and they're saying I'm bleeding heavily. And so the doctor says, okay, you have an issue with your cycle. Your cycles are irregular. The doctors know already, right? They may do a, some kind of scan or whatever, and they may be told they got fibroids or cysts, right? But at this point, when, when, when it's just, when you go in to see a physician or a general practitioner, you're not in that much pain. It's uncomfortable and it, you know, you're bleeding heavy. It might be embarrassing because you might stand up one day and it's like red down on your pants or whatever, right? So I'm just, I'm just being real. Things that happen, why it's like, all right, I've had enough of this or whatever. So you, so you go as like an outpatient, right? And you go and see a, a, a general practitioner, a GP, and they're saying, okay, we're going to prescribe you Right? With your pains and your symptoms, heavy bleeding and everything, we're going to prescribe to you the pill. Now, this pill is an estrogen pill. Right? Estrogen pill. And you're told, females are told, that with this pill, it's going to regulate their cycle. They're not going to bleed so heavily, and it's going to be regular. Like, it's not going to be irregular come, you know, I bled for eight days last month. I only bled for one day this month and I've missed two months. I thought I was pregnant or whatever. So they're told to go on to the pill. Now, this is where the commerce comes in. If you have small fibroids and small cysts, you can be operated on and they can be removed without any kind of damage to you or whatever, right? I mean, even though there are risks and whatever, they can be taken out or they can be treated to eliminate them or whatever. But what happens is you are prescribed a pill. The estrogen is what is responsible for the fibroids in the first place. But they don't tell you that. So they give you something that is going to heighten and worsen your situation. So if somebody goes in with little pains, you know, cramps and whatever, they're given these estrogen pills and then they're going and taking these pills and, you know, um, all right. So on a, on a packet of pills, right, there's days, there's numbers. And then there's a time when you stop taking them and you only stop taking them to bleed, to hemorrhage. And then when you stop bleeding and hemorrhaging, 
Now you go back on them again. So you're, every day you are taking excess estrogen. Right? And this estrogen is going to promote inflammation. It's going to promote inflammation. This inflammation are the cysts and the fibroids. This inflammation of the uterus or inflammation in the ovaries. All that um, fibroids are is muscle growth, tissue growth. And that's down to inflammation. Right? So, once you start taking the pill, it gets worse. They grow and they grow. And then this is what happens. Most black people do not like going to the hospital. It's like we're afraid of two places. Courts and hospitals. Mm -hmm. Right? So, we only want to go to a hospital in the event of what? Say that again? Emergency. emergency. We only go to the hospital when it's an emergency. Like, all right, I need to see somebody now. I'm in pain. I'm going to die. I'm in so much pain. You know, we're, usually we're not talking like this. We're crying. Ah, I'm in pain. You know, suffering and all that. So, there are laws to protect patients. And this is called, the laws are called this. Informed consent. Meaning, you go to a doctor and the doctor consults with you. Okay, you need a procedure. What's, what, you, what you need to happen is such and such. We want to carry out the procedure. Now, we need you to sign these papers if you agree. Right? That's a normal situation. This is how white people go to the hospital. They go or they go to a physician and, and the uh, physician speaks to them and they take their time, you know, because they usually go to a physician when they're feeling a slight cramp, when they're, when, they're, when they're noticing an irregularity or excessive bleeding, they go and see a physician. We tend to wait until like it's panic stations, too much pain and all that. Now we go ER because I don't know what's wrong with me. I just got this pain in my stomach. It feels like I'm going to die. The laws... Governing procedural operations are, in the norm, <clears throat> a physician, a surgeon, whoever, have, they have to give you informed consent. There has to be informed consent that basically you're giving them consent because they've informed you what's happening. Now, in an emergency situation, this law doesn't apply. They don't have to tell you what procedure they're going to carry out on you. Because basically in, in, a, in an ER, whatever it is to treat you or to save your life or, you know, when you go into an emergency room, you fall under a waiver. It's basically a waiver. You waiver your rights to informed consent. So a lot of females are going into the ER, keeling over with fibroids or cysts. And what they're doing is they're performing because to get rid of the cysts and fibroids, it may be, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars to maybe at the most twenty five hundred dollars to perform, you know, for that procedure. Physicians and doctors and surgeons and all the staff and all that, they have to break this up, they have to break each other off when they're only dealing with, you know, these amounts of money. They're breaking off, they're sharing, they're splitting twenty five hundred. Right? When it comes to a hysterectomy now. That's a full, more um, intense operation, and the prices are on average. Sorry about that, that's emergency. Jackson, Jacksonville, Florida, Amber Alert. <laughs> we're, in, we're in Georgia. And your sister's cramping up over there, man. <laughs> All right. So, for this procedure, I don't want to use a darker pen. I'm trying to read that I've got a neon green. All right. For some, for, so, 
the amount that it costs is anywhere up to like ten thousand dollars and that's the front end on procedures anywhere around anywhere up to around ten thousand dollars for 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 a hysterectomy thousand dollars so this is a setup to this for commercial reasons now every year there are 600,000 hysterectomies in the United States every year approximately 600,000 the amount of money they make from the 600,000 hysterectomies just for procedure is five billion dollars. <throat> five billion dollars. Now, so let's put the amount of people, right? 600,000 women per year doing hysterectomies and it's making this amount of revenue. That's big business. That If, if you're in the business of doing hysterectomies, you're making you're making your money. Now, out of those 600,000 women per year, 78% are black women. 78% are black women. Right? So, 78% share of this $5 billion is around $3.5 billion. $3.5 billion. And above that black women are spending on hysterectomies now we're talking about the front end of a hysterectomy it's just a procedure after hysterectomy right has any does anybody know um, any females who have had proceed um, a hysterectomy all right how long ago like you um, how long ago did that female have a hysterectomy? Ten years. Ten years. Yeah. And do you notice any changes physically with the female? Yeah, she had to start doing a lot of stuff because she started going to menopause. Well, what it is, when a woman loses her womb, what makes a woman a woman is her womb. When a woman loses the womb, it cuts off certain um, interreaction with hormones and she starts to basically become more androgynous. Women who go through hysterectomies, they start to become masculine in their features and they start to grow moustaches and beards and it's not a very... You know, it's not a not great sight to behold. Plus, first and foremost, the most powerful energy, the, the initiating energy on the planet, is sexual energy. Sexual energy is lost. Libido is lost. Creativity is lost. These are the fundamentals of our, you know, our race, is our ability to create, to procreate. And to have ideas and to be able to express our ideas. So when somebody loses their, when a woman loses her sexual reproductive organ, it's a wrap. Now, this phenomena is not, you know, like when I was younger, I thought, you know, like my mom's old now, so she's going through menopause and it's the other way around. Menopause is usually, you know, because you have some women who have hysterectomies because they're going through menopause and they're told you don't need your womb no more because you can't have children anyway and it's giving you these um, these hot thrushes you're going through all these you know all these symptoms and it's because of your womb right so eliminate the womb you eliminate your problem now that is true to a certain extent for the symptoms so these women getting these hysterectomies that's what's going on with them, and they're like, all right, that, that worked out, and I'm happy 
Because a lot of women who were going through menopause who had hysterectomies, they're saying things like, I'm happy to be living my life without a womb now. It was causing me too much problems. Women who are suffering from fibroids and cysts, they're saying the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm glad because I'm not going through that pain and suffering anymore. Right? But they don't know this. And this is um, the biggest business on the planet. The biggest business on the planet. And this is the interaction of the class. Now, what do you think is the big, biggest business on the planet? Insurance. Insurance. All right. Come on, let's go. Oh, business, that. Businessman time. Let's go. Pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. Uh, how many people agree? Pharmaceuticals. All right. So, pharmaceuticals is is one of the might be like the second or third largest industry on the planet. <clears throat> First and prime. Number one industry on the planet is the body parts, buying and selling body parts. So from placenta, when a child's born, right? Now, some of us in here, when our children were born, we said, we want the placenta. Mm -hmm. No, you can't really do that. Yes, I want the placenta. I want to take this. It's, it's ours. We want it. Came out of her. We're taking it with us. Placenta is used, one of the prime places of use of stem cell research, right? So for a placenta, and especially a black woman's placenta, that joint brings in between 250000 to half a million dollars for that one placenta, for the stem cell, yes. Just to, um, just to add on your comment, I have experience in emergency rooms um, past few years, and I've witnessed um, when a female of our race is going through a procedure like that, they have a separate process. Um, usually, in a regular uh, procedure, if any organs or body parts is lacerated or damaged, it gets, you know, uh, not swept up, but it gets gathered in a certain format. But when it comes to that, uh, ovary or womb or anything in that region, they have a, a black box. They have a whole, they have a special container in which it's placed, and I'm even removed from that process. And my role in the ER was a uh, unit clerk, a unit secretary. Right. So part of. They don't want you damaging their revenue. Well, that they don't want interference with their revenue. It just stood out to me because usually there would be certain people from the lab I would call and certain people would get called to come in and handle. So there was a process already in place. But for the womb, the charge nurse came in and handled duties that usually were handled by me and was placed in a different um, canister. And me just being unconscious in the moment, right. I just noticed that. And then what it was, me in the womb, you know, so I just wanted to add on to what right. you did. So, you, and you so, do have the right to speak up and request that your organs be retained. Because if you don't, then you will take that. Well, check it out, though. But this is the thing. You go into an ER, you ain't got no right. That I was going to ask you a question on. Because when you mentioned that with the informed consent, um, they do... They are and do still require them to inform you of a procedure because they can't really perform a procedure without consent. I know what you're saying in some emergent situation. Right. The law requires a normal procedure that you sign and you agree that they're letting you know. But in an emergency, let's just say I've got a pain, I've got a pain. They can actually operate on you in that emergency and then tell you afterwards, this is the procedure we carried out. Because we had to um, perform an emergency procedure. So under emergency procedures, and I'm trying to remember the um, CFR, there's, a, there's an actual um, code of federal regulations mm -hmm. about procedures in medication, you know, medical procedures and of informed consent where that's wavered in an emergency situation. So in the ER, 
whatever, you know, and, and usually, you know, like, black people, you might sprain your ankle or you twist your wrist, you know, or whatever, and you go into an emergency room because you think something's broken, they take your blood. This is also sold for stem cell research. So anything that they take from you, it's money that they're generating. So you have women, especially with abortions, because abortions are big time. So women are going in and the aborted fe um, fetuses, they're selling those also. So they're getting $250,000 and up for aborted fetuses. So this whole thing, what they're taking our sisters through, is all about money. It's all about them generating great revenue and the worst thing about it is that this is you know women are spending around between eight and ten thousand dollars for the procedure so you're paying them you're paying somebody to make money off of your body parts basically explain to them that's not actually the treatment right that's and then the after operation. after the procedures then there's another $5 billion made on hormone replacement therapy. Because now a woman starts to turn into a man, voice start getting deeper in the beard and everything starts coming out and it's like, okay, take this hormone, take these hormones. Then they give them more estrogen. Now, with the more estrogen now, estrogen is a carcinogen. What does that mean? It's cancerous. So they're wondering, Europeans are wondering, how can a, a natural hormone be a carcinogen? How can it be cancerous? Does anybody know why? How can a natural hormone be cancerous? Well, all right, that's true. So they synthesize estrogen, right? But they're talking about estrogen hormone in a woman's body. Could be. <laughs> So, how can something natural, a natural occurrence in the human body, be cancerous? Imbalance. If it becomes acidic. That's too. All right. So, estrogen itself is a carcinogen. Not that it became acidic. It's a carcinogen. So there's two types, two main types of estrogen. You have um, what you call estrogen alpha, and then you have um, estrogen beta, which is called, this one here is called E, E, e they call it, and this one is called E2. Now let's say that this one here, estrogen beta, or E2 is cancerous carcinogen on its own. This is called also known as um, estradiol. I know. I'm trying to preserve it. Right? Estradiol. Estradiol is, car is a carcinogen on its own. Estrogen alpha is carcinogen is a carcinogen and cancerous when it's under stress via um, oxidation, oxidative stress, meaning the removal of oxygen, like what you said, removal of oxygen and free radicals, this now becomes a, a, a cancerous agent in the body. So the question that we, as the Aboriginal Medical Association, or not the question, or the more like the fact that we're, you know, the information we're giving out is that estrogen is not supposed to be in a black woman's body. It's not supposed to be in a body. 
estrogen is not supposed to be in the body. Every cell of our normal cells in our bodies work harmoniously together. You cannot have a cell in your body and all of a sudden that cell on its own without any interference becomes cancerous. Now I'm only giving this information right now to generate questions because we have a panel. So there's two types of estrogen. One on its own without any interference from outside is cancerous. The other one, the moment there's oxidative stress, it becomes a cancer promoter. So why would they get it to they know it's cancer? No, it's not going to get it. Wait, wait, wait. Huh? Women have estrogen in their bodies. And the question is, how did it get there? It wasn't given to them by doctors. Like, you know, all right. Somebody says, all right, I'm bleeding too heavy. Yeah, take the estrogen pill. Yes, that's going to promote it. Now, why would they give them the carcinogen that you're saying that promotes that? They know it's going to cause cancer. Because they're going to make money. <laughs> so, in other words, you're going there for one thing, and if you come out of it with another that, then she got cancer. You got to look at when you see those. Uh those commercials for medication, it says cure this, but it may cause this, 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 that. But they can't say cure. They can well, never yeah, say well, cure. you know, prevent. Right, prevent or alleviate. Yeah, exactly. So, somebody goes in with pains, cramps, it's like, oh, it's your cycle. When you get, well, yeah, when I'm on my cycle, all right, take, take the pill. And it will regulate your cycle. But it's also going to promote estrogen. And by the promotion of estrogen, it's going to cause inflammation in the body. So is estrogen foreign, really foreign to? It's foreign to the black body, yes. Now how it gets in is, how do things get into our bodies? Mixing genes. Through your mouth. <laughs> All right, miscegenation is one, yes. Mixing up genes. Diet as well. Diet. I have a question though. So he's saying estrogen is not a uh, it's not yeah, a natural, natural hormone. hormone. It's not a natural hormone. No. It's what we what we say is it's a normal hormone. It's normal now, but it's not natural. So I'm under the assumption that estrogen and testosterone have been part of our genetics for some time. Okay. Yeah, we've been we've been educated um, by way of um, European anatomy, physiology, and genetics. Okay. So, what's the correction then? So, estrogen is is explain to me what the error is that I have then in my perspective. Um, elaborate your question. What was estrogen before? Where was, was it? Well, what was it called? No, what yeah. was it called before it became? Because I don't, I don't believe it was always called a carcinogen. I, I can understand that maybe our diet mixed with the estrogen caused it to become more, you know, change its natural form or whatever. But um, anything. All right, anything that's in your body mm -hmm. that will promote cancer is not a natural part of your body. It never that. has been a that. natural part of your body. So it ain't that estrogen used to be okay, but then at some point it became a carcinogen. It has always been a carcinogen. So why wasn't why wasn't the cases of it? Why are the cases more apparent today than before? Because, all right, now it being a carcinogen means that it is a cancerous agent, right? So it's like um, you're baking a cake and you, you know, there's ingredients to baking a cake. If you don't have all the ingredients, you're not going to bake a cake, right? So estrogen is one of the ingredients. It's not the root cause 
because there's another root cause to cancer. But this will be like, all right, you know, people are, all right, how do you get flour to rise? What, do you, what ingredients do you add? Yeast. yeast, right? And what else? If you can't find no yeast, you got baking soda, or you got like eggs or whatever. So there's ingredients that, all right, this cake cake gonna rise unless we have certain ingredients. And this is, estrogen is one of those ingredients that, all right, this cancer's gonna rise. It's gonna grow. All right, so it takes another foreign entity to come and mix with the estrogen, you know, um, to feed off estrogen. So there's, so, so we've identified now that you have estrogen, which is a carcinogen, right? Now, this is the thing with... Has estrogen estrogen. always been in the human body? No, it hasn't. It's... Hey, it's so you and right? Mm -hmm. All right. Before it was in the human body, it wasn't. <laughs> there were, these are the two... We have um, testosterone, what did you the real one? and we have progesterone. Those are the two hormones which are responsible for gender and sexual um, sexual um, activity, and you know, um, secondary, primary, and secondary. Um, sexual reproduction. There are these two hormones. The estrogen has become a part of this system of medicine that has been put upon us that we accept it because we believe everything they're telling us. This estrogen was not a part of, of our anatomy. There are events which took place thousands of years ago which created, um, which was from a cataclysm, which brought in the um, nitrogen cycle. Now there's this phenomena right now on the whole planet, where our, the air that we breathe in is 80% nitrogen and only 20% oxygen. But if you go to any, in any medical encyclopedia and you say, what is it that makes us work? What do we need? First and foremost is oxygen. And you say, do we need nitrogen? No, nitrogen we don't need. So 80% of our atmosphere is nitrogen. So every time we breathe in, we're only getting 20 parts oxygen, 80 parts nitrogen. Nitrogen is a poison to our system. It's within the nitrogen cycle or nitrogen proliferation cycle that we are basically breathing in poison. Now the reason why our livers are so big is because the liver's job is to filter nitrogen out of our bodies. That's its job. One of its primary jobs for the liver is you intake nitrogen, we're going to filter it out. So we want just oxygen, oxygen. Oxygen is what's responsible for our electricity throughout our body. It carries the charge, it carries the nutrients by way of our plasma and our blood. And we filter out and flush out by, by way of our lymphatic system, right? So there's estrogen that's in our bodies, and with men with prostate issues, all men with prostate issues, it's down to estrogen. Men who go bald, it's down to estrogen. <laughs> Where's your references for this, sir? All over the place. You say you all over the place. We get our references from all over the place. Um, from the CDC. Which you can go onto the you can go onto the CDC now. My references is on the slides. Right. Right. You know, which is a shame that we don't have the slideshow up, but it's um, the Cancer Society, Breast Cancer Awareness, you know, all types of universities that have been doing research on estrogens and everything. Um, you know, one, it's out there. This, this, the information is out there, but because we are not readers like that, because we're living our lives over here, we don't realize what's going on. So if estrogen is a um, carcinogen and estrogen pills are being prescribed to teenage girls, 
who are sexually, you know, so-called sexually active and all that, then they're actually putting, planting seeds to reap the benefits of cancer. Now, there's all cancers, every single cancer that there is, bar none, is caused by either a virus or bacteria. Can you use a red marker? Red. A virus or a bacteria? Any questions at the moment? Because, yeah, I was going to ask the same thing. Um, I'm, still, I'm still trying to capture the progesterone and the estrogen. Because um, I heard you say that estrogen was always in us. It's not something that was given to us by the doctors. But then this portion of the board shows that it wasn't. So I'm trying to make the connection at what point All right. estrogen became part of the system. And estrogen through miscegenation and also through um, the nitrogen proliferation cycle where nitrogen became part of our atmosphere there was changes and deformities which happened in our bodies where spores invaded our bodies spores nitrogenous spores funguses parasites and these parasites became symbiont within our bodies they had a symbiont relation so if I say to anybody in here, all right, you have immune system, right? We have an immune system, right? Everybody agrees that we all have an immune system, <coughs> right? What makes up our immune system? Do we work for? What makes up our, yeah, what makes up our immune system? Kidneys, your liver, red blood cells. All right, so, all right, so there's, <laughs> all right, there's two things, right? Our lymphatic system, right? Lymphatic system is also known as our immune system. But part of our immune system, they say you have your lymphatic system, then to go with that, you have, you know, the immuno. Globulins. Immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are known as white blood cells. IWBC. White blood cells. Now, since we've been taught biology and everything like that, or you might see it on TV or whatever, you hear about white blood cells being part of your immune system. It's part of us. Right? White blood cells don't even share our DNA. They're not supposed to be within our bodies. White blood cells are invaders, sporous invaders, parasites which live in our bodies. But yet we're told, no, your white blood cell, you have to have a certain count in white blood cells. And if you don't have a certain white blood cell count, you got AIDS. You got AIDS. Yeah. That's what people are being told. What do you mean you got AIDS? That's what they tell you. That's what they tell you. Eggs. You have you acquired eggs. immune eggs. You thought I said eggs. I thought you said eggs. Like eggs. eggs. <laughs> 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 I got no white blood cells. Yeah, you got eggs. You've been eating eggs. Yeah. No. AIDS. Acquired yeah. immune deficiency syndrome. Yeah. Acquired yeah. immune yeah. Deficiency syndrome. So your immune system is lacking what's acquired. Right? Mm -hmm. So we believe we believe all this time that white we have red blood cells and we have black white blood cells. The definition of a blood cell is something that travels throughout the veins and the arteries through the heart and lungs and throughout the body, through each organ and everything like that. But it stays, a blood cell stays within the walls or within the blood vessels. Never leaves a blood vessel. But white blood cells 
leave the blood vessels. They leave. At, their, at, at will, they leave. Red blood cells do not contain any DNA. They contain oxygen. They are basically the electricity carriers throughout our bodies, but there's no DNA. White blood cells have chromosomes and they leave our bodies. So they, their behavior isn't like a blood cell, but we're, we're, taught, we're taught they're blood cells, but they're not. They're in fact spores, they're funguses or fungi, yeasts. And they're parasitic entities that have been living in our bodies. So, has anybody heard of the term autoimmune disease? <clears throat> What's an autoimmune disease? Hmm? It's like when the body's trying to, it's kind of like AIDS, but it's kind of like when the body's just, uh, well, it is AIDS, hello, it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is AIDS, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right. So, does anybody know what an what, what what causes an autoimmune disease? Anybody ever heard of what causes? They say it's the like you said, it's kind of like it's like no kind of like whatever the that's what HIV is. All right. So, an autoimmune disease is where your body they say your cells attack you. Your own cells start attacking you, start attacking tissues and organs and start devouring what they call um, phagocytosis. It's, it starts to eat you. Now, again, normal cells in our bodies work in harmony. Why would cells ever start attacking each other? So, the definition of an autoimmune disease is when white blood cells start to attack your normal cells. White blood cells start to attack your normal cells. And they devour them. And they cause things like leukemia, lupus, Crohn's disease, vitiligo. Right? All these diseases, when white blood cells attack. Not when sharks attack, when white blood cells attack, you get all these diseases and some of them are chronic, some of them cause death, like, you know, leukemia, you're dead, you know, causes death, lupus causes death, it devours tissues, heart tissue, whatever, causes all this inflammation, swelling, growth, cancers, all kinds of, you know, all kinds of diseases. So... You're we saying, know you're saying that white blood cells are actually not blood cells at all. They're not they white. They're not blood cells at all. They are spores. They are spores. They are parasites that have just been accepted as normal because of who's been teaching us anatomy, physiology, <coughs> and genetics. Sneaky, sneaky. Yes. So is it good for them and like not good for us? Or is it gonna... I mean. It's not good for us. Whether or not they want to say it's good for them, that's down to them. But we know it's not good for us. But you said you studied both sides, so you know, do you know it's No, good? I said I study generally right. anatomy physiology. But I study our anat our anatomy and physiology more in depth. So whether they you know they say your immune system you need white blood cells. Your white blood cell count has to be up. And the reason why they need that is because they don't have the electrical charge that we have. Uh, yeah, our melanocytes and our mel um, melanin-stimulating hormones, melanocytes, these are nutrients and electrical carriers. It's responsible for our electricity. Without electricity in your body, you're dead. But because we are our melanated beings, we have a higher charge than they do. Because they have lower charge, you know, there's more in, um, there are more invaders into their bodies. Their bodies are more prone to parasites. Now, a white blood cell is basically like a, um, 
a drug dealer that's selling drugs outside your house, on your street. You don't want him there, but one thing that he does, he protects his territory. So anybody that comes into your neighborhood to sell drugs, other than this drug dealer, you're going to take them out. Either he's going to take them out or they take him out. But whoever gets in place starts protecting the territory. So this white blood cells job, here's, here's, the, here's the job for white blood cells. To devour any cells that are low in charge. Any cell that's low in electrical charge is going to be devoured by a white blood cell. So when the strong survive. Right. So when you're when 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 you have an autoimmune disease, it is always down to either you are dehydrated, not getting enough fluids, enough water, or you are um, you suffer from hypoxia, where your tissues and cells are not getting enough oxygen. So your your blood cells are not carrying oxygen to your body. So white blood cells will devour red blood cells when red blood cells are not charged electrically. They'll devour other cells. Every cell in your body is made by red blood cells. All your tissues, organs, bones, everything is made from that stem cell or that original cell, which is your blood cells. So when you start losing electrical charge in any of those tissues, it's because your blood is losing charge. I know in sports, um, like when you have a uh, high count of red blood cells, they kind of like um, punish you. They punish you, right. You hear that? Yeah, it's, it's illegal. It's illegal. Why is it illegal? Because you perform better. Mm. Think about it. When you have a high red blood cell count, you perform better, so you're cheating. So they've been trying to tell black folks, you need to get your white blood cell count up. I was in a health store like a few months ago and some, you know, woman, really dark skinned woman was in the, was in the health store and I hear her asking the guy for something and she goes, yeah, I need, do you sell such and such and such? And he goes, yeah, it's around the back. She's like, yeah, because I was, my, my doctor told me my white blood cell count was too low. So I said, excuse me, can I ask you a question? She said, yeah, shoot. Like, are you sick? Are you feeling sick in any way? She goes, no, I feel great. I feel fine. I said, why, if you feel fine, are you going to go and put something and get some medication or some, take something that's going to promote white blood cells in your body? She said, because my doctor told me that and my immune system's low. I said, but if your immune system was low, you wouldn't be feeling good because we're surrounded and this is the thing, we are surrounded by viruses and bacteria, we're surrounded, we breathe them in, we ingest them all the time, every time we, every time, every time we breathe in, we take in spores, viruses, bacteria. we take them in, fungi, we breathe them in, all the time, we're breathing in junk DNA, we breathe in, and that's all the viruses. A virus is just the DNA and the RNA of another animal. Anybody in there got pets? Of another animal? Of another animal. That's foreign to us. It's foreign DNA and RNA. That's all what a virus is. Foreign DNA. So when you hear of um, swine flu, what animal is the, is, is the, is the RNA and DNA from? Yeah. From a pig. So when you have avian Flu. It's an avian. Right? Avian. Bird. 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 I heard bird avian. That's the German word. <laughs> 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 avian flu is bird flu. Right? So in order for a flu virus to take effect in you, because we're breathing this in all the time. Uh, my brother over here has hardly ever been sick in his life. Right? What's your blood type? You, was it, I swear you was O negative. All right, O positive, all right. So you have people who hardly get sick. Is be, and the reason why they don't get sick is because 
They're not putting garbage into their body. A virus or bacteria needs food, needs um, host junk DNA or transposons that is shared by you ingesting something which you cannot digest or process. And it sits in your body and they come in and that's their food for them to cling on to and for them to breathe. Yeah, what are you going to say? Did you say we are breathing the same air in, in this room? We can't, right. If you need breathing the air, we No, but all right. Check this out. <laughs> we all, check this out. We all breathe in viruses, bacteria, funguses, and all that, right? But when you get sick, it's because you've created an ecology, an ecosystem for them to breed and multiply in your body. In an oxygen, highly oxygenated environment, they can't survive. Ox viruses and bacteria cannot survive in highly ox um, oxygenated environments. Cancers cannot survive in highly oxygenated environments. So if somebody has a cancer, it's because they are suffering from hypoxia. Isn't what they call same? acidosis. Acid acidity is the lack of oxygen. Right. So isn't it the same as we had an alkaline body? We couldn't survive? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So one of the things that we like to get across to people is, is all right, there are such things as structured acids and there are things such as alkal alkaline substances that will kill you. Bleach is alkaline. Ammonia is alkaline. It's the highest form of alkalinity is ammonia and, 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 and chlorine bleach. That is high, highly alkaline. So if a bo somebody wants to get alkaline, they could just go and drink a whole bunch of ammonia or bleach. Mm -hmm. But what happened? It killed him. So, and, on, and you have mushrooms are highly alkaline, but a mushroom is a spore, it's a fungus, it's nitrogenous, it's a poison. All mushrooms, so you don't eat any mushrooms? No mushrooms. I, I, I didn't like the way you reacted when he, he said he was O positive. Like he wanted you to say he was O No, because like no, because most people who I've met who don't hardly ever get sick and I ask them what their blood type is, they say O negative. And the reason why O negative is because O negative is is blood that does not have any <coughs> spores or antigens. And what about O positive? O positive has uh, uh means that we have the rhesus monkey's blood. So we got monkey blood? We got monkey blood. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's positive, who's got, you know, because the positive stands for rhesus positive, which is the rhesus monkey. So we have a foreign symbiont, you know, uh, infiltrator, so parasite. That lives on our blood. But he doesn't get sick. No, I said he hardly does. He's been sick before. So every time he hardly does. Tree, he wants time to but people who <laughs> people who don't hardly get sick is down to the environment. They they've created an environment in their body, an environment in their body where these viruses and bacteria that we breathe in all the time are not able to breed and multiply. I'm, I'm not trying to make a joke of this or anything, but I know his brother eats all kinds of shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you eat curry goat? That's not a monkey. They eat all kinds of shit. What would you eat? Huh? What would you eat? I, eat, I don't eat any meat anymore. I mean, I cut all that. No, but all right. Where did you start? Um, I don't know, six, seven months now? And how, so but, yeah, so I you mean throughout my life? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just no, but it's, it's down to other variants. Like, um, you know... One of the things that what we what we do talk about is our system of of um, seeing how somebody's system is built with cosmobiology. We have a system called cosmobiology, 
where we can tell you about your strengths and weaknesses yeah. in your body and what kind of conditions can be derived from your your you know your so magnetic if predisposition. Right, if you born right, you can do whatever you want. Well, if no, you can't do whatever you want to do because no, because he has been sick. But the, if we look at somebody's natal chart, we can see it's just like somebody who, who if we look at their natal chart and they have a strong respiratory system, right? It means that whenever they eat nutrients, the nutrients always will go and strengthen that part of their body. That person could be a chain smoker, consistently smoking, never get lung cancer. Never get inflammation. White blood cells can't deal with their lungs. Right? So, just like he hasn't, been, you know, when this virus is going around and whatever, he don't get affected by it because, you know, in his intestines or wherever it is, he's, he, you know, he's got strength. Yeah. Um, I remember, I think I was probably about like seven years old. go to the doctor and they did some tests on me and I remember the doctor telling my mom like he pulled her aside and was like yo your son is never gonna get sick you know this was like seven or eight years old I remember him saying that to her and she was like why and he was like um he has something extra in his blood that's why I remember him saying it. and I mean do I want I never had chicken pox and you know like really ever had the flu you know anything that nature. I, I've never been sick. He, I've been around people with chicken pox and all that. I never caught that. Right. I've now, and now that's that's good news for you. Yeah. Had anybody in there had chicken pox? Mm -hmm. All right. So we we all, we all got herpes, man. We all got herpes because chicken pox is herpes, and it's a dormant virus that lives in your body. It just stays dormant. Did you say chicken pox is herpes? Yeah. yeah. That's right. It's a form of herpes. It's like 0.5. So it's always, so it, so it always in your body. It stays dormant. That's why, you know, you can be around other people who get chicken pox. The next level from simplex is zoster, which is shingles. <clears throat> so when somebody, like, if you had chicken pox when you were young, Real young. It means that you have a higher risk when you get old of having shingles. But if you ain't had chicken pox, then it, it, um, it diminishes you ever contracting shingles. It's a virus. It's a parasite that enters your body. So in the case of female reproductive um, problems, once a woman has, you know, five and six golf ball size fibroids, um, outside of just diet, what things would you suggest that she began to do? I mean, see, a woman who has fibroids needs to stop taking pills, the estrogen pill, first and foremost. If a woman's on a pill and she's experiencing cysts or fibroids, um, she needs to go on an estrogen fast, meaning she needs to cut out all forms of estrogen intake. Because there are, there are procedures which they can either cut it out, give you a hysterectomy, or do the embolization, uterine fibroid embolization, which is basically they, they cut off the blood circulation to the uterus and basically starve the fibroid of receiving blood and it withers away but that's a very dangerous procedure which has so many complications even unto death right but the diet is the key so when you say outside of a diet what can she do is like no <laughs> that's that's the pinnacle of what she has to do is you need to change your diet now um i think i've got it up here on my, of all the foods that somebody with fibroids have has to uh, has to avoid. So females who have fibroids or cysts, if you want to read out. The sure. List. Fermented foods. All fermented foods. Yeah. Vinegar. 
Then they go re, re, start scroll down the whole. These, go, these are go down. You have to get rid of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Stop eating. Go Caffeine. Start, start from A and work your way. Start at A. Alfalfa, anise, seed, antacids, antidepressants, apples. Baker's yeast, barley, bread, caffeine, carrots, cherries, chickpeas, clover, uh, black-eyed peas, cucumbers, dairy foods, dates, eggs, eggplant, fennel, fermented foods, flax seeds, garlic, uh, all beer and alcohol, licorice, oats, olive oil, olives, papaya, parsley, pears, peppers, plums, pomegranate potatoes, pumpkin, red beans, Red clover, rhubarb, rice, sage, sesame seeds, soybeans, soybean sprouts, sunflower seeds, tomatoes, wheat, yams, all purines. Or, I don't know if that's what you need to say. Plastic water, oh, plastic bottled water, frozen and thawed water, and animal flesh. So they probably gonna get the fibroids and that in. I was gonna say something. They're gonna get it instead of what they can have. Right, that's why I'm here. <laughs> no, well, first of all, it's but what you, you gotta shouldn't address have. This, though. You gotta address and this. The, and the point is, when you tell people what they shouldn't eat, they think that's everything that I eat. It sounds like so it. when you when you discover that you just listed my whole diet on that thing right, right there, right. everything right. I've right. ever right. eaten, that you, you put on there. Thing. So that's when we said we have this foreign entity called estrogen in our bodies. It's because you're going to eat in all them foods that have estrogen in it, and you introduce it into your body, and it becomes part of your hormonal system. It mimics hormones. So, I mean, some of those foods you've had in there are um, supposed to be good for you to eat, supposed to be used, that you can use. I heard you mentioned some red clover. Some yeah, there's stuff that that like is good for you. In use. There's stuff that's good for you, but when you are on an estrogen fast, meaning you do not, you want to, you want to obliterate estrogen out of your body, you don't put certain foods in your body that's going to um, help to maybe feed. Even though otherwise it might have been good. It might be good for you. Like cucumber is excellent yeah. for you, but whilst you're going through that fast, you take that out because it's like, you know, water's good for us, but if you're dehydrated and you're about to die and somebody says, look, I've got some vodka. So what you're saying you're like, is... like, give me the vodka. What you saying is you should consume those, um, you should not consume those foods if you're trying to go through... Uh, to go through so fibroids, when you're to eliminating fibroids, them. right. Yeah, but you had water on there, so how is water... I said it, water, water in a plastic bottle. Water that's been frozen and then thawed. Neglected water, you left it in... It's good water, it's um, essential, but you left it in the car overnight in the summer, and you already started drinking it, and you left it, and you come back, oh, let me drink some more water. No, you just introduce a whole bunch of bacteria. You know? So by the time you get the bottle of water, you probably want to sit in the truck somewhere in the warehouse. Exactly. I mean, so that's why we, we even, in the Aboriginal Medical Association, we always ask people, are you sure you've been drinking enough water? Are you sure that the water you're drinking is actually even water? That's a whole new class. That's a whole, yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole other class. We've got, we got a whole class on that. So that would also, that diet would also include people that have, men that are having problems with prostate. Prostate, yeah. Yeah. Eastern and far. Men that are going bald, that are receding, and you know, their hairline is like doing its own thing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just for the camera, just for the camera, there was like four brothers that said that. He said that. Yeah. You know, Mike won't take his hat off, but he's like, hairline, hairline, is, cool. that's hairline is on crap. Right here, but as a cat. I think also, you know, that is just. You just sprayed those. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's just temporary, though. Once that condition has been dealt with, yeah. then some of those foods will be yeah, yeah. good. Can be reincorporated. Can be reincorporated. Into that. Into You're trying to that. starve something out. You got fibroids or cysts, or you got prostate issues, and that this estrogen fast is going to make sure you eliminate that. Once it's eliminated, then you introduce. Cucumber, you can reintroduce cucumbers if it's wild. Yeah, wild cucumbers. You wild. can reintroduce black sesame seeds. You know, one you get in your backyard from? You yeah. You'd be growing it, yeah. With the right seed. With the right fertilizer. And with the right fertilizer, too. 
Make sure your fertilizers, no nitrogen in it whatsoever. You are talking about a uh, copper, the structural acid for women's bodies. What's the difference between a structural acid and the uh, the myth of you know, an acidic body breeds disease? All right. So in our in our system, right, there are you have positively charged ions and negatively charged ions, right? Now, some positively charged Ions are actually good for us. They're good for us. <coughs> or should I say, you have acidic, should I say, let me rephrase that, we have acidic substances such as lemon. It's a citric acid, but it is negatively charged. Negatively charged. Therefore, it's actually doing our bodies, keeping our electricity going in our bodies. Now, our bodies are made up of soft tissue, liquid, and harder tissues like our bones. Our bones need structural acids to be as dense as they are supposed to be, to be rigid and strong. So when somebody says you should not have any acid, avoid acids, anything that's acidic, that will exclude citric acid. It will exclude um, ascorbic acid. What's ascorbic acid? Ascorbic acid, right? Yeah, ascorbic acid. Is that? acid, you'll find that in like... Ascorbic. Sorry. <laughs> you'll find that in... See, that's when you don't do two things at once. <laughs> <laughs> ascorbic acid is vitamin C. C. And you will find that in things like coconut, orange water, juice. not orange juice. Leave orange juice alone. Leave, orange Leave that juice way alone. alone. You may... Lie... I know, but it's not a good citric acid. Yeah, what you just he, said. He's is, talking is about negative charge. Acid. It's, it's like a lemon. No, it's going to be positive. Orange, because it's positive, positively charged, we're not going to have that. Okay. But lemons and lime. Yes, we that's love from, that. From, that's, from, that's, from a, that's from a citric, citric family, though. We don't want to touch the grapefruit. Really and truly. Yeah, no, grapefruit no. is, is enough. He's talking about structured acid and citric acid. Citric acid you don't want in your body. You want structured acid. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so the so there's a substance yeah. which which is called aromatase. Aromatase. Aromatase is a um, is a substance which is a form of estrogen. And they've managed to synthesize aromatase. And they've been using it to um, perform sex changes in animals, in both physio physiologically and also psych psychologically. Meaning they can, they can use, apply aromatase or in, in you know, um, inject aromatase and control the sexual behavior of animals in both directions. So they can get a male to like males, females to like females. That's what they give the guys when they go to prison. They put it in their food so they don't get so horny or Edson Salpeter. Huh? Salpeter, they used to call it the drug trade. That's what you said. No, I mean, they've been, they've been, they, you have to understand something. Humans that are incarcerated become lab rats. Humans who live in low income areas become lab rats. So we live in a society now where a hundred years ago, somebody was homosexual, it was frowned upon, it was abnormal. That's not proper behavior. That's, you know, religion would put that to death. Right. You know, now, I don't know if anyone's heard about the Duck Dynasty. What is it called? The yeah. Duck, Duck Dynasty? Yeah. The guy who came out and said, yeah. um, yeah. stop about homosexuals. Yeah. That. The black boy father. The father, right? They kicked him off the show. They, they suspended him from the show. And he's a Christian, a redneck Christian. 
that their Christianity is their whole life and everything, and it's in the Bible, but when he speaks out and has the opinion of the Bible, you're off the show. And the reason why is because it's now become a normal part of society and you can't say anything against it. You can't say anything against it. So what is unnatural becomes normal. You know, and we have to understand, we live in Atlanta, and Atlanta is one of the um, gay meccas. Right, gay meccas. So we have lesbians, you know, real butch women, and we have a whole bunch of home, um, you know, homosexuals, and it's a norm for it. But in nature, it has no place because in nature, any homosexual um, entities will not reproduce of and by themselves. They'll cat, they'll die out. So there's never, you know, if there was, you know, a thousand homosexuals a thousand years ago, how would that continue? It wouldn't. It couldn't, because they can't reproduce of their own. It's self genocide. Huh? So genocide. I mean it's not it's, no, it isn't genocide. it's it nature will handle it. Yeah. So, but if it's induced now, chemically induced through agents, chemical agents, or you know, extracted agents that they find, all right, this aromatase, which is a part of estrogen, we find that we can actually change the sexual behavior and also the, the organs. We can actually change organs in bodies. That's so crazy. so when you when you when you find that in the in in prison there's a lot of homosexual behavior because they're feeding them high levels of estrogen so how does the aromatase like aromatase creates the estrogen in the man so how does that kind of no they if they inhibit they they have aromatase inhibitors to do it in the other direction yeah what effect because, does that have on a man oh what effect does it have on a man yeah, yeah. Um, reduced testes and um, genitals and um, this condition here gynecomastia which is man breasts men that have titties titties what's your problem that <laughs> right, can you run? But but this is what I'm saying is that through through excessive amounts of estrogen, men develop gynecomastia, which is they develop breasts. They can get breast cancer. So what is this aromatase and aromatase? What does that mean? Everything we just mentioned, not to eat, apart from you know, there's there's some good stuff in here. But we have, um, I have a list of the aromatase, I think. Mm. Aromatase. Soy. Soy, tofu. Mm. Hold on. Chicken. Aromatase. Fish. Mm. All right, so aromatase based foods. Chef Akeem, when you're ready. Uh, tofu, soybeans, soy protein isolate. Uh, so that would be like the, the, the protein powders, the soy protein. Right. Uh, sunflower. Soybean oil, sapphire oil, corn oil, alcohol, cheese, milk, and legumes. So that also mean all corn products as well? All corn products, yeah. Corn chips. Anything the GMO product or is this all products, period? If it's corn and it ain't wild corn, <laughs> if it's wild corn, then you're right. But wild corn is a, a whole different color. If you get yellow corn, you know why it ain't wild that's the green giant's <laughs> corn. <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah, called maize. Uh, like, uh, Tio Sente. The beginning of the summer, they had this lady on the, the radio station. Um, she's a nutritionist. And she was talking about um, the, the way she phrased it is that there was certain behavioral changes in our community. Meaning, you know, a lot of gay guys in the black community. And, all. and she was saying that in some countries, soy is out there and it's, it's for consumption, but 
you know, in the, the baby formulas, they're putting soy, they're, you know, just <coughs> using soy as a substitute for consumption. So she said that's equivalent to giving a male child a birth control pill. And right. she said that's what's added to a lot of the changes. Because when you get these baby formulas, that's why they don't want these women to breastfeed. They want these women on, you know, to have their children on formulas because the formulas is actually changing, you know, the the um the the sex of the men. You know, right. becoming exactly that's exactly what it's doing. Child, he's becoming feminine, and that's why we're seeing that influx of you know um, gay dudes in the the black community. Right, and what one of the things what what estrogen does as well, it removes the what we call an endogenous or endogenous copper out of the cells. Within our cells, we need copper. That's part of our electricity. For us to conduct electricity, like on a battery. You look at a Duracell battery, you've got carbon and copper, right? So that carbon and copper produces the anode and the cathode, and you get a current, right? The en <clears throat> en endogenous or endogenous copper is what's being attacked and what's being removed out of our cells. So when females, females need copper in their system. For a woman to be a, for a female to be a female, she has to have copper, you know, a nice balanced level of copper in her system. So the reason why you're seeing these arm wrestler women, <coughs> I was in. The, I was. I was. I was getting my hair cut yesterday, and there was something in the in the barber shop that I was trying to figure out if it was a girl or a guy or a boy, because you know um, it was very skinny and short. And I'm thinking, is that a young boy or is that a like a 28 year old girl? You know, zero breasts, no no back, no curvature, nothing, no hips. Hands on the ground. He pants way down there. Yeah. Walk, walk, walking around like a little dude. Well, well, and I'm well, like, well, 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 the voice. Uh, and there's, you know, there's, 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 there were hints left. There were hints left of, of <laughs> <laughs> little, little specks. But, you know, us living where we live, we know there's a bunch, you know. What did you say? Oh, here we go. Back in the day, if you, lesbians were, you know, were, was like a dainty thing. But now you, you're seeing that there's these butch girls and they don't, it's not even by, you know, you've got some lesbian women because men have messed them up. I'm deciding I'm going with women now. Because women understand me and all that, right? They're not truly lesbians. The butch ones who behave, act like, speak like, they can't help it and they try to grow beards and all of that. It's because they've been gen genetically or their chromosomes have been damaged, their cells have been damaged or or deformed where they actually are and androgens now. They're androgynous beings. They're men. They, they've been turned into men. You want to take a five minute break? Yeah. 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 We're going to take, we're going to take like a five. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We're gonna take like a ten minute break. There's fifteen. Fifteen minute break. There's some um aromatase <laughs> free inhibitors or aromatase free food outside and some flu um some uh refreshments as well. You said free food? <laughs> <laughs> you almost said Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> free. Right. One, two, three dollars. <laughs> One, two, three dollars. Oh. I'm still, how do I pull up your email? Okay. I need to send three of these things to myself that I've been asking you for. I can incorporate it into my network. I thought he sent me the list of the food. He sent me, he, no, no, no. He sent me something. But then he didn't send me what I needed. I see. You said you wanted a list of um, all the foods that, that are... That I could use for... Right, and I sent you. Yeah, no, that, but that was what I needed that day. Because I was in a grocery store and I needed to get certain things. She said, look at my 
Time you go go to the airport. So go go. That's over now. She needs to be picked up. Huh? Yeah. 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 She looks like a black and Mexican, tall, long, black hair, big, thick hair. Black, she like a black, black Mexican black. girl. Uh, she's uh, dark skinned. Yeah, but she's dark skinned now. She's a pretty girl. She's got bad skin. Gotta work that out. She got bad skin. We're mm -hmm. working on it. Yeah. She's on the EOV right now, just flushing the system. And um, what's she eating? For those of you who are horrible, and yes, I'm there. <laughs> she's juicing, but she's juicing GMO. You know. Oh, no food is allowed in there. By the way, we have to eat outside. Tommy, bring your chair out there, Tommy, round the table, because we can all sit outside there and eat. All right, aroma, taste, taste, food. As well as. I'm gonna send. I'm sending one at a time. No, I'm sending. Like I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you the inhibitors. But remember this, do not put this out there because um, that's information that will be presented in classes, so we don't want it already there, so we already know how to treat ourselves. So, so in the case of a, of a client who comes and pays for one of our yeah, we'll do an assessment. Right. And he comes in and helps them. Yeah, there you okay. go. Then they can, okay. That's, that's how I want to keep it. I'm not trying to put this on you. Yeah, I've been cool. having that and I have it. No, it's been years I've been having it. Okay. Right, cool. Yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. Yeah, you can get you the babies that you've been having on there. Yeah, what I've been having here. I'm like, did I make you an administrator? Administrator of my sister? Yeah. Okay. I think so, yeah. Let me take one. Please, please, don't. Oh, I was going to post some two videos. One about the AIDS being a hoax and one about virus. Mm -hmm. And the other one was actually the epidemic of fibroids and tick and mm -hmm. whether it does to women and what is the side effects. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a video of them getting the cut off. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and then I had a link saying, when that was explaining that, then I had another thing that was that saying that um, black women are leading the race. Mm -hmm. it to so they can look at that, see that. Yeah, I mean, when I tell you, like, feel free to go on there and post anything you want and start conversation, even if you just want to say a sentence, you know, a statement, whatever. Because the thing is, I have to keep that thing hot, and mm. I can't always. Yeah, I know. Just, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Oh, that drama. But the more we keep that thing hot, the more I can go on there and say, "Sister, send me an email address." Yeah. Boom. Boom. So, so yeah, that yeah, that is yeah, our yeah. that's our that's our our, our our honey pot right there. Yo, I never know those projectors were so damn expensive. The good one. Yeah, like that one starts off like two something. Um, what time are you going to? 8 D? Um, whenever. I mean, you take questions and um. Definitely, I don't want that. So you have a slideshow to cut. Yeah, we had a slideshow, man. 
Yo, Todd, I know you got like everything in that truck, man. Mm-hmm. You ain't got projectors just hanging around the dashboard, man. I got some projectors at home. Brand new in the box? No, they ain't brand new. Oh. Oh. The big thing about projectors is the bulb. The bulb costs so much. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What What I reckon... The projectors are not cheap. Do you you want to... I got two projectors. I jump into house. the licks on the NATO chart for the next part of the class? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, because... You should have told me I would have brought a projector. No, uh, a <laughs> well, long story. What's wrong with that one? What, long story the projector? Yeah. yeah. That one is not working right. It was our backup one. Yeah. And we had to bring it, but it wasn't, it was like, at the bottom, it's very blurry at the bottom. And it wasn't bright. It's not, the lamp and, and is the, weak. The, the, the focus, focus is, the focus yeah. is, is, is off and it won't click to back on. That's the lamp. The lamp costs the most. That's the biggest thing about projector. I had, I had, I had one. I had a theater room in my house, and then my projector went out. And then I had a brother of mine bought another one to show me how good it played. So I just ended up buying it. So I had two. So I went on to order the bulb from the one I originally had. And um, when the bulb came, in, it made me have two projectors. So now I don't have a theater room at all now because the house I moved from had a basement. I finished my basement. My basement finished now. Oh. So I got two projectors I don't even use. One of them has the uh, remote with the, the red um, infrared thing. Yeah, on. that's what we just got today. I don't even know if that remote would have worked on that projector. No, it's supposed to plug into the um, like it the software comes down here, comes into here. Well, you got you got to have your computer set up. You got to go to the Projection side of your computer make that work. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. I didn't know that till I tried to do a slide show one time. Oh. And that's what I was doing while I said, that's what I said, you know what? I can't go, to the go for all of that. Yo, know, so my, I was Christmas, man. I was chilling. Oh, I'm so great at this yeah. Any plans for the new year? Yeah. Trying to make them trips, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 waiting um I'm waiting because I gotta get two passports, you know. I gotta get an English passport and an American passport. American passport no problem. I can go down to Atlanta and get that in like two days. I just I just renew mine. Huh? I wanna keep both full citizenship. Oh, okay. I mean that's kinda being good, that's good. That's cool, man. Yeah, I just wanna renew my jam too. Your jam one? Oh, J. J. Yeah. Did you say you was down there a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I was down there for a week. Where? I was in uh, November. Oh, all right. What part? Um, I was down in Clarendon. I went to Ochi. That's where my same area. Oh, I got pictures of my, my grandma. Oh, nice. Yeah. What, the one in London? London? Yeah. Okay, what part of London did you? The Crystal Palace. South London. I know South it's London. South London. <laughs> yeah, so that's over the bridge. Now, you know, know they had Apollo in London? Yeah, we got Apollo in London, man. It's been there? It's been there for years. It was always one that was just around, around like 10 minutes walking from where I live. Always, man, the, um, Freddie McGregor, Luciano, all of them, man, they come play there. Really? Yeah. You know, people get bloody shot, stab, everything outside there, man. Apollo really? was notorious, man. So it was in a bad area? Yeah. Yeah. Raised up in a bad area. I know. It's like one of those areas that is bad, but I wouldn't have changed it for the world, man. Hey, you can grow up there, you know. It's what you know. You know how to live there. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a spot. There was, a, there was still a community vibe about it, man. Like growing up, you know, the, we didn't have all the Xboxes and yeah, we PS4s and that. We was outside playing, outside man. Playing, yeah, and yeah. Football and Same great games up, and made fun and that and you know yeah, we, we like saw though we saw when the yeah. and the thing is you see like the kids that the, the individuals that are going way with you can oh. see it like there'll be a group of us be like yo let's go play some ball then there'll be another group be like now nah, we're over here and they'll be chilling over there and you're like what are you doing over there and they'll be like smoking weed and from there they'll be like yo you know I'm breaking into this you know whether it's the play center you know, to get the top shop. And then it was like, oh, they came driving a 
stolen car. You know what I mean? This is, and then you start seeing them off branch and it just got worse. And then these guys, as they got older, the crimes got more serious and more worse. And so, you know, now every little one in London, man, they're, uh, man, they're riding a mountain bike with a pit bull and a gun in the back pocket. Really? Or a big freaking knife. And a pit bull. So they set the dog on you while they try to shoot you or stab you. That's how they roll. My friend, his um, niece, she was 17, pushing her baby in a pram with her friend. And these guys just rolled up, blasted her, 12, 12 gay shotgun straight to the chest. Bam, bam, bam. Three times. Her and her friend died instantly. And the children were dead. Apparently, was she no, I think she was seeing, or the baby, or her baby father, or nice. who she was seeing, was in a rivalry gang uh, to those guys. So they couldn't get him, so they got her. In London? In London. They brought their life. Like the police ain't got guns, but the people... Yeah, the police are pushing. <laughs> now the police, the police are starting, there's certain police now that are starting to have guns, but I'm telling you, I said to them, man, yeah, once the those police, police those white boys in yeah. England have guns... They'll be like your Mississippi, Redneck. Alabama rednecks with guns, and that's where black people gonna feel because they're gonna shoot every damn body. That's crazy. They're gonna shoot everybody. It's crazy. Yeah, we got that here Alabama. Yeah. There you go. There you go. It's crazy, and and that's the thing. It's like, you know, we had our little weapons and our little tools, but I remember, you know, man, put a gun in your hand at them days. You're like, I was Superman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. now, yo, from the age of 8, 10, they're, they're flying with M16s and bloody uh, Mac 10s. And yeah. they got like, I mean, so they're like, they're they're like literally that. like, they're ready to go like they're fighting Baghdad or some shit. And you no know what I mean? For life, man. You know? No value yeah. for life. No value for life. They throw in tear gas old. and grenades in parties. Old, like, like in house parties yeah. now, they throw in a grenade. Blowing shit up. Yeah. They're crazy. Yeah. yeah. They're crazy. And it's the food. It's the bloody food, man. It's the diet. Because you can get a burger that's not a burger with fries and a drink for like 99 pence. <laughs> 99 pence? Yeah. That's like one pound, which is like a dollar dollar fifty or dollar sixty yeah, cents. Now like over here you could get um you could get uh, a dollar for a dollar you can get a, a burger and a fries and drink at um I went and got myself one um McDonald's. No man um chicken not chicken fillet uh what's that damn shop man he's on Memorial Drive on the corner. Memorial Drive. Yeah the kind of that you kind of drive up to the window. Well yeah most of these Checkers. Checkers. Yeah, checkers. Yeah. Yeah. You see them on the TV? Now I didn't go and get them. I was only playing. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if you, you watch TV, they are... Listen, man. I'm telling you all, do this. Just sit down for an hour with a pen and pen and watch TV. And every time, just write down, was it Pizza Hut, Domino's, yeah. Wendy's, whatever. How, many, how, many, how much oh, times the commercial comes on with okay. those food within one hour. Hmm. Oh, and yeah. then ask yourself, how hungry you feel afterwards. You're going to see a program yeah. that's going on. You'll see a pattern. Do that every day. And sometimes you'll, see, you'll notice you'll get hungry at a certain time when those commercials are being plugged on the TV like crazy. Yeah, it's like subliminal. It's subliminal. I'm telling you. And, you, and, it's, more, and it's more apparent when you're doing a detox or a fast, like where you yeah. kind of separate yourself. Yeah, and you might just say, child, let me just watch something through the movie or Dude, to just to, you know, I ain't going to eat for another four hours. Let me just watch a game or something to pass the time away. Every damn commercial. Checkers. Pizza. KFC. Yeah. Like, what the hell? It's like, it's crazy. <laughs> man, because they're killing you. So the kids there... You know, it's like out here. But London was highly, um, was one of the highest crime cities in the world last year. It topped New York. When they had the, the, the riot thing, man, they were showing a video. Yo, that was, those, man, those kids they were, were fearless. Shit, fearless. They were like That's 16. The and the games too, man. Yeah, they, they were like 16, nothing, 14, 13, and they were running up against really? police, and they were yeah. going at them like, listen, they were like, they were so angry and they were crazy. And then they were, 
They were going in the shops, bro. They like just going in Foot Locker and that was taking out the big TVs, walking down the road with the plasma TVs on top of the heads and everything. And, and all of that. I know, right? And the police, the yeah, the police were the police were not around. And then the whole city, though, when when they let everything calm down, around two months later, houses started getting raided. Police were just rushing in the houses. What's up with the guy, man? They killed on they killed on that YouTube thing they showed where he he had shot. What he shot a cop or something? Oh, the black guy. Yeah, the black guy stabbed up the soldier boy. Yeah, I don't know how real that is because how the hell you stab a man, cut his head off, right? But there ain't no Broadly blood, like. and there's no blood on the floor. And you just have some blood on the knife, and then you see the black woman with her shopping bags walking past, like ain't nothing going on. <laughs> and he's like, this is in, this yeah. is jihad, you know. Yeah. We, we back wow. in my country, we do this every day. I'm sorry that you women have to see this, but this is how we have to do, because these devils. I'm like, how the hell are you going to walk past a dude yeah. getting filmed, and right, with blood all dripping off the knife in your hands? And there's somebody's body with a head decapitated, and you just pulling a chopper, shopping like, yeah, right, what's up? Right. Come on. Yeah, they came and blasted him. Come on, man. Oh, that was Come crazy. On. Come on. There was three of them. Two got blasted and one survived. Really? Yeah, they're in court now. No, nah, well, even one of them in court. Yeah, that's what I said. They killed that one dude. They killed two of them. He ain't in court. No, that's what I said. The one dude <laughs> yeah. alive, he's yeah. in court. He's going through trial. And that. Uh, and, um, how you like how this, this rich kid? Uh, was the okay, the rich kid killed four people, kill four people and, and they want to send him to a fancy retirement camp that they're trying no, to they save. No, they he got probation. Yeah, he got probation. He got probation. Got, yeah, no, 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 no. We got probation based that he goes and spends some time and in, yeah. in there. But have you gonna see in that place? Yo, yeah. indoor swimming pool, jacuzzi, <laughs> saunas, three, five star four <coughs> hotel. I mean. Uh, Yo, this is like... And that's punishment. Yeah. This is something... Yo, it costs something like 20 grand a month for him to be there. And that is just a tax write-off for his death. And he killed four people. And this is the third or fourth time he was found intoxicated. One, he was intoxicated having sex one time. They found him in a car. Second time he was intoxicated, he crashed the car. The guy's only like 15, 16, and he's had three incidents with the police, and every one of them he's been intoxicated. Yeah, it's like your boy, rich kid. Yeah. yeah. So like, the, the, and so you want your punishment to let him off. Yeah, uh, <laughs> drunken driving. Any questions, Crystal? How are you finding the class? I do apologize. Like I know, I know. That is real. I'm very dingy, my mom. Yeah, so what we're going to have to do again is come here and basically just. Videotape him teaching a class, even like if it's what he was doing. No, nah, I mean, a proper, I mean, with the slides, with a proper projector with the slides. And then what we can do is yeah. put that, yeah. yeah, on the DVD or upload and then see people to su subscribe to the AMA website and then they can see the full class that way. So you get to see the slides and things like that. Or as a website? Yeah. <clears throat> you know. Because, I don't know, writing on the boards like this these days is, is too much like school, right? <laughs> it's like, my head hurts. I don't, but when you see a slide, you know, you're like, all right, there's pictures, there's colors, it's more, you know, and then some of the pictures are graphical and some of the statistics you actually see, you know, like they say, pictures speak a thousand words, right? So <laughs> it has more of, a, a, more of an impression and an imprint on you. But, you know, writing it down like this, it's like, this is good if you have little notes, but then you've got the main slides going at the same time. But to try to, try to, like, do study, especially something like health, you need visual. You need visual. Not just writing there like this. Because even, like, I got a university in um, California with one of the top... Uh, <coughs> physio and human anatomy specialist and she's teaching and she's like I'm old school I'm writing but I know how the new school is so she's got this big drop down screen with slides and when she's writing and she's saying it you can see the audience but then once she puts it on that slide and they're seeing the visual and the picture it's like everyone's like whoa you know but it's real strange because 
I think the sister made a, a excellent point that, you know, there's just, you wouldn't go to the barbers and, you know, use a barber already. You know, you get your odd white boys that you might have caught mm -hmm. through your barber career. But majority, they go like that. you know they what I'm they saying? Go. They go to the VR Sassoon and whatever. And, that, and then it's like, you wouldn't go to um, a party like a rock concert. No one even would go to like a rock and roll or heavy metal concert to see like... Uh, like Guns N' Roses and all those people there, even though they're kind of branching out and we're mixing in with them, with their music and shit. We wouldn't do that. It's just certain certain things we would notice that, you know what, that's white, that's black, we like, ain't going in there. you see a Chinese dude making but, pizza, you're like... Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But, I like, and you won't go into Applebee's and expect to get Caribbean food like that. And then even when some of these shops try to do Caribbean food, like, uh, what's it, um, Bahama Breeze on, yeah. and they do their jerk, like, what the hell, that ain't jerk chicken. That's just some roast chicken you paint in with jerk. Yeah. You ain't fermenting yeah. that, that ain't being matured in the jerk seasoning, yeah. man. Yeah. When I have jerk chicken is when I cut that in half, I still smell the jerk coming out of the chicken. Right, right. right? But it's funny, what is funny is that we will go to them for help, yeah. Always. thinking that they can cure or help. When, when you look at it, it's like all of us now we're feeling the cold. It's like we ain't used to this. This is the worst time of the season for us. We're like, yo, I ain't going out. Like, yo, I'm saying you coming. I ain't going no, man, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's too cold. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, That's but, the but, first sign. Oh my! She gave me that look, man. She defenses, <laughs> though. Defenses. Yeah. The difference is with, with that those analogies that you give us. You have the choice. Right. In, in, but in you don't have the but choice. now, now like right, to now. And that's right. what that's what is happening. Because for so long, we're realizing that we ain't getting any results. Right. You know, big mama and everybody's still dying. Right. And that because it's when you, when, you, when you look at it that, all right, we go under the sun and we get darker and we get a whole bunch of vitamin D, vitamin B, bit of a C going on and you know our skin glows and you know we're looking younger we're vibrant you know what I'm saying and we can play whether it's soccer or basketball under that sun for hours on end all we do is just grab a little drink and we go back and play and with them you find that it attacks them right and then if you've ever been growing up or seen white people play in the summertime and they start sweating they have a funk oh, it's a different smell good. right you don't know what that is, right? You're like, hey, that's a different funk. That's, that's ammonia. That's the nitrogen. Because that's what they're based with. They're based with ammonia, nitrogen, ammonium. Ammonium, ammonia, nitrogen. Ammonium is part of nitrogen and free. A mixture of nitrogen and ammonia together is ammonium. We are hydrogen, copper, and oxygen. So when we're under the sun... That sun is charging our red blood cells. That is creating a more of an oxygen environment. Also, the nucleus within our cells are getting charged. That's why they to the getting charged, right? Right. So when people are saying, oh, they're, they're melanin recessive, there ain't no such thing as melanin recessive. You either got melanin or you don't. There's no such thing as melanin recessive. That is a lie. Mm. They don't they have oxygen. melanin. They breathe nitrogen. They breathe nitrogen? The atmosphere, what we're breathing in now, uh -huh. is 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. That's why you should walk what? around trees, because trees still let off bio-oxygen, which is a natural form of oxygen. Plants in your house or something. But they... When I was growing up, I always knew that Trees, you, you don't cut down all the trees. Exactly. Like the oxygen exactly. Up. And and the white people used to. Yeah, they want to live under all the trees. Huh? Yeah, because they want, they want, they they. Okay, what you have to, what you have to understand is that when the original white people were were, were coming out of the caves, they realized the conditions that they wasn't surviving in those conditions. So what did they do? They went and mixed, in order to survive. Yeah, trying to mix. They ordered to survive, so they had to take. Piece of that's why you need to get a book called uh, 
Mummies, cannibals, and vampires by Richard Storm. S U U. Right? Mummies, cannibals, and vampires. That book, I email you the link. That book tells you how in the 1700s, it's a medical book, but it breaks down exactly how and why they were eating black people's organs to, to, to sustain their life. And to pursue that, to keep them living. Because the natural environment that they were living amongst, and it was, it was, it was restricted, it wasn't conducive for them. They would die. It's, it's, it's um, a book called Mummies, Cannibals, and Vampires. Richard Su, S U U. And it breaks down on a medical book. Breaking down how they were eating us, how they would literally lynch, kill, and eat our organs of our black people's bodies in order to survive. The black woman's womb, they, they used to, I mean, you know this through slavery. They used to go to your sisters when you were menstruating, having your periods, and get the blood to take it to drink and put it in their foods. Oh, yeah. What was this, this, yeah, this is what was going on through slavery. Mm -hmm. These people are vampires. That's why we have the true blood. And the guy that you know, we he? have the true blood. Richard Yeah. What is he? Black, white, no, he's a white man. White this is what they're confessing. Oh. Listen, man, the white man ain't going to lie. He ain't going to tell you straight up he's that here. I don't care. I know who you are. We know who we are. But you're still going to come to me because you're still in fear. Yeah, they would put their feet on a little black child and say that this would help to pull out the toxins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know that um, yeah. that one uh, that Lincoln vampire story. That was the whole thing was about. Uh, uh, that is a direct yes yeah, section cut to, of those yeah, books of that book whole, of that the book. Whole Civil War was a, a, a battle between the vampires and the humans, and that's why they were letting black soldiers go in there. Because behind closed doors, when the, when the black soldiers were getting killed and they were taking their bodies, they were keeping the black soldiers' organs and feeding off them. But you gotta, um, That's crazy. You got to remember, too, you, know, you got to look at it. When you talk to a lot of doctors, they don't really know what's going on. Doctors don't study. Once they get out of school and stuff, they're fed their information. Right. You know? And they have and all they these have books. Pharmaceutical companies come visit them, because my boy works for the pharmaceutical company, and they go visit these doctors, and they tell them, like, okay, push this drug. Yeah, yeah, this drug is for They this, get a regular this. kickback for that. But yeah, yeah, they, I think you know, the message, they don't, they I don't think... They study. They don't practice. It's called a practice because that's all they there do. There it goes. They're practicing. So they're, they're practicing on you. Any further than that. There's some doctors that still do research and stuff like that. But most of these doctors that you go to, they don't do any more research or do anything else. They're fed their information. And I, and I, I don't mean to cut you, but I think one of the main things to drill home is what... The sister said, the chef he said, is that we have to take, our health is the most important thing in our life. Because when we get sick, you know, one of the worst things we ever want to hear is those words. You know, you got cancer, you got this. It's like, oh shit. Anything we hear from our family, we don't want to hear that. But we still put ourselves and line ourselves up to get assistance from them. So what was, yeah. For what health. Was, what was the name of this author? Richard. Richard Sir. So, yeah. So, it's S-U-U. -U, his last name. But the, the, the thing that I'm trying to explain is that when she said you wouldn't go there to a hair, hair salon to, for her to do braids or give your afro or get, you know, high top left, we wouldn't go to them for certain things because straight off the bat, it's like, that's their culture. That's yeah, not ours. Do with that. But why? Because they're different and we recognize that difference straight off the bat. But when it comes to health, we don't. And that's the thing we got to drill home. That's what AMA is drilling home. We're not the same. Our human anatomy is not the That's same as them. It's a known it. fact that black people should not, that anytime you go, and I don't know if any of you ever done this, when you go and get tested, they will let you know. They will always say, you know, you're healthy, okay, but your white blood, your, your white blood cells are a bit low. You know, we got to wash that. You got to get some more vitamin C. Have some orange juice or something like that. We're not supposed to have white blood cells, period, in our body. It is literally a black and white thing. My mom is going through that right now. You know, and they got, but you know how my mom is already. Right. My mom is listening. 
Definitely. But she she's going through that because they got her her blood cells are out of whack. But her her natural body is telling her that this is yeah. an invasion yeah. and you them. don't need white blood cells. And she, they have her on these different medications to try to regulate this and that. And yeah, because really what they're going to say is that we got to balance out your yeah. blood cell count for your red and your white. And, and it's like, well, arts did this. Why is it that they teach you that no white blood cells should ever <coughs> go or interfere, interact with any of your major organs? If white blood cells go in your brain, you're dead. If the white blood cells go in your heart, you're dead. Why is that? If you're supposed to have it. If it's supposed to protect me, then if it goes into one of my major organs, I'm dead. It's not supposed to be in our body, period. So how do you get it out? By the diet. By your lifestyle. By your diet. By how, what you consume. How it comes in is what you consume, and how you get it out is what you consume. It's all about your mouth. We're going your mouth. It's, your it's literally your diet. It's your lifestyle and the food that you eat. And you're literally, your blood is the food that you eat, so you are what you eat. They say that blood is made by the, the bone marrow and tissue. No, it's made in your digestive it's system. In your intestines, that's where it's made from. And then once it's filtered from there, it goes through the liver and the spleen and then distributed out to your brain and major organs. So you're literally, you are what you eat. So if you eat bad, you're going to have bad blood. <laughs> if you eat healthy, you're going to have good blood. And that's then... I'm going to let Amsu go take over again. No, no. But that's what, you know, you see like what I'm wearing here with a native chart. This is um, a cosmos biology. No, nah, that's pex. That's pex, bro. <laughs> hey, he's come that's a pecs. long way, man. <laughs> right? But this way. here, without, we had them on the slide there that we would have, you know, the projector was working, but it's basically this, and you see it on our website. And that here, with your um, time, date, place, and time, date, place, place and, and time. time of your birth, we can give you a full health assessment, right? That will show, like this chart here is Mike's, and the red lines here. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking, but no. This is this is of some this is of someone, right? And basically, what this will show, right, is your strengths, your weaknesses, your deficiencies, right? That you're prone to maybe have, or could be suffering from now, or prone to have later on in life. This is going to show it all up. The twelve signs of the zodiac, okay, and planets. And houses all represent major parts of your organs and your body. It's a science that was passed down to us. Okay? And as you know, <coughs> the, 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 cosmo, the cosmo universe or the science of the cosmos, it doesn't lie. You can't, it's not no spooky, religious, Allah or <coughs> Jesus Christ or Elohim or anything like that. It's a straight up science. Now... When you go into a medical practice or you go and see a doctor, you know they want to take your blood, they want to examine you, they want to run scans, they want to do everything in order to find out what's going on. With this here, we don't need to open you up on nothing. We just need, say it again, Amsu, for them. They place in time of birth. There you go. That's all we need. And from that information alone, we can give you a full health so How is that? How because every time you're born, or when you're born, not every time you're born. <laughs> when you're born, right, when you're born, you are, it's, it's, you are basically, I've got a, well, a unique electric magnetic blueprint. And everything is to do with magnetism. Magnetism, all right? And electrical frequencies. So you are stamped with your own individual electrical magnetic frequency or birthmark at that time and place or where you was born. So with that, we now can we can now give you a full diagnostic of your health. Again, the so red line when you come out of come out the womb, you're saying. Basically when you where? When you once you're born, the place you're born and at the time, it all depends on what 
constellation were in no, rising and descending on your place. No, I'm, I'm hold. I'm saying like you saying time like. Like, they, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, say if you was born in Grady Hospital uh, on Tuesday at 11 a.m. That's what I'm saying, the that, time that, of day. There you go. That's that what makes a need. difference. Right. Because yeah. you ain't going to know when Tommy was conceived on that time of day when your mom and dad was... So, so I can have the same thing? makeup as another baby that was born the same time. Of course. But, say, for instance, now, you was born Tuesday, 11 o'clock, um, 11 a.m., 11 o'clock a.m., right? And someone else was born exactly that time. And that, but no, it could be in the same place, Grady. It still you wouldn't have the identical chart. Well, you won't. You have your own personal electric blueprint of Todd. No, but That's you said one. date, time, and place. Yeah, right, place. place and time of birth. If somebody else is born at the same date, place, and time as you. Yes, you will have the same yes. predispositions. Right, you will but have not, the same. You will have the same. You're gonna have. Identical. If somebody was born exactly at the same time as you, yeah. you're going to have the same electromagnetic predispositions. But how that's going to be varied is um, the really lifestyle. Really yeah. The different lifestyle that you that you live is going to determine whether or not you're. Um, all right. Let me let me try. So you look. If you yeah. look at whether or not you, you're if you, if, you, if you look at what's on his chest right now. No, right. come at it. So let's just say you. That, let's just say Todd. That's yours, and that's somebody else who was born at the same, same time. Ti place right. and time as you, and on the same date. Like a baby who was, you know, and was within the same hour, within the same hour or whatever. You're both gonna have the same birth chart. Both of you will have the same. Yeah, birth I was chart. gonna say you have to. Yeah. You're gonna have the same birth chart, right? And that means your birth chart doesn't mean that you're going to get. Whatever conditions, your conditions are determined by how you fertilize your soil. Okay, so and how you exercise. So, so, so you may, so somebody might be eating something that causes <coughs> problems with, like, if we look, if we let me let me go around this, right? So, so this person here, each of these <coughs> constellations represents a different body system, right? So, this is Aries, what we know as Aries. Aries represents the brain and central nervous system. This is Taurus. Taurus represents the endocrinal system. This is Gemini. Gemini represents the respiratory system. So right now he's got respiratory and brain. Right? He don't have the... Well, he don't have the same say my child. And no, I'm saying on this, on this on person, this, oh, yeah, right? This person, yeah. And Cancer is the yeah. lymphatic system. Leo is the circular, circulatory or cardiovascular system. Virgo is the digestive system. Libra is the excretory system or urinary <clears throat> system. Um, Scorpio is the reproductive system. Those move around though, don't they? Sagittarius. What do you mean they move around? Like, yeah, let me finish yeah. what I'm saying. Let me finish what I'm saying first. Okay. Before you throw me off. <laughs> Sagittarius, muscular, Capricorn, um, skeletal, Aquarius, meridian, Pisces, skin and integumentary system. Right? Then you have planets. Each of the planets represent either a component, a body component, or a condition. Right? So let's say for instance this is mars mars represents neurons nerves and neurons this is um so that's a component bodily component this is now um saturn saturn represents um rigidity strength or stiffness right so as functional or dysfunctional when there's a red line going to it it's a dysfunction when there's a blue line, it's a strength, right? So you might, so you, let's just say you share the same chart with somebody, right? These are the issues that you, all these red lines are issues that you can possibly develop through not feeding yourself correctly, through malnutrition, right? A lack of nutrients and minerals. These are all the conditions which, if we look at here, right? You've got Aries. Aries is in opposition to 
Libra. So your brain and central nervous system, right, is in opposition to your excretory system. Now the planets that's in here, like this is um, Jupiter. Jupiter represents in a dysfunctional swelling and inflammation. So there might be inflammation and swelling on the, in the brain or, in the, or within the um, nervous system, right? And it's being caused by um, the excretory system, a dysfunction in the excretory system, which this planet here is Uranus, and Uranus represents electricity or alkalinity. So because of lack of electricity, electrical flow and alkalinity within the excretory system is causing inflammation and swelling in the brain. In the brain. Mm. So that's saying. just one. So that's just one. So this person here, the reason why I use this one is because this person's got, you know, pretty jacked up in this is about it's got this enough red a, lines. Amazing. So, grace. so <laughs> grace. No, I'm joking. Yeah, so we can look at this and go over general, we can tell them every kind of situation that they can face within their life. Right? Yeah, Generally. They, and, their thing and then is we have the, right the degrees. Food. If they eat the correct foods, we know, all right, each of these systems of the body also, each system of the body and the organs within them have um, a mineral makeup. Calcium or manganese or, or whatever, right? Potassium. That's so if we see an magnesium. issue within this, Iron. we know, okay, we need to supplement the tissues or the minerals that make up this particular tissue or organ or system. You understand? I understand. So we know exactly how to eliminate the root causes because we just feed it the nutrient. Only one disease, which is malnutrition. Okay. okay, so you have a chart like that, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, so this, you, so is you, a, this is an example of a chart over here, right? Okay, let um, me ask you a question. I need to stretch you out of it. Let's just say, for instance, you, you do somebody's makeup, their chart, right? Today, uh -huh. right? And, and they have their whole chart. So then they, 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 uh, they, they do the, the correct food change that's based off this chart, right? So then you go see them say a year later, their chart's going to change? No, that's a default. That's Basically, a on, a, on, a, on, a, on a chart, it's showing that, showing your, um, your intrinsic or your, um, your default weaknesses. No, I'm going to see, like, everything. Your body was, when you were born, there was an electromagnetic signature that all your systems of your body um, were configured. Mm -hmm. And either they're going to be strengths or they're going to be weaknesses. Now, in the event that you are not eating correctly, your weaknesses are going to be apparent, become apparent, and you're going to be afflicted by those weaknesses. So let's just say you've got um, parasites. Parasites enter your body or fungus or whatever. They go to the weakest part of your body. So let's just say your blood is distributing nutrients. The, place where, the places where your blood is going to always give nutrients too it's going to be where those blue lines are so you're going to give you know it's going to give you know it might be your lungs for instance your respiratory system that when you have nutrients your body's default is give it the, the priority number one priority place is the lungs the weak place is going to be the least priority place so when nutrients are being distributed because that's what it is it's an offset that nutrients are not going to be shared correctly evenly so in the event oh, it's like when there's an abundance of food everybody can eat mm -hmm. but if there's a drought and a famine the upper class people are going to be catered for and the, and the, and the low income people are yeah. going to be like all right here's the chitlins and whatnot you eat you know basically soul food right but because, that's just because of your magnetic makeup and that's because of your mag electromagnetic makeup your magnetic makeup right so your body's going to always do that distribute nutrients and minerals in an order, in a priority, a prioritized order. So in the event that you're, <clears throat> that you're not getting enough oxygen, for instance, oxygen is not going to go to that particular part of your body, which if there's no oxygen, that's going to be a haven for parasites. So the parasites will fester there and they'll reproduce and whatever. Hence, you have the conditions yeah. or whatever. So on that chart that he's wearing, you know, 
the planet Pluto is a planet which denotes conditions upon birth and on death. So conditions upon death is basically what kills you. What condition is going to kill you. So we can tell somebody, okay, if you don't eat correctly, we can tell you the condition is going to take you out if you don't get hit by a bus, or you don't get shot in the head or whatever. If you die by natural cause, so if you die by, by way of an illness, yeah, it's going to be this. It's going to be, it's going to be this. And it's going to be spot on. <laughs> exactly on. So we do a general, we can do a general where we can say we see issues with this, 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 this. Or we can go deeper and say, okay, we look at the degrees now. And we can tell by the degrees what limb, what part in whatever organ is not correct. Or organs or whichever system. So we can, we can do get a nice general overview. Then we can narrow it down to an actual... To conditions, we can, through our knowledge of, of um, you know pathology and everything, we can tell you, all right, we see this, and that's what it usually means. Like if I see inflammation, and it's in some and and it's in a male reproductive, and it's inflammation, and I see it flutose there, I know that's prostate cancer, because mm. cancer.